Hello everybody. Welcome to Erndale's. It's Dale and I'm up in my studio today and I'm putting down my pieces for some applique work that I'm doing to make mug rugs. If you watched my video yesterday I was showing you that I had cut out a bunch of different kinds of mug rugs um, and that I was mentioning that I had to attach in particular these vintage camper ones I had to attach them to a piece of fabric. So that's what I've been doing uh, today. And while I was doing it, I thought, you know, I should just turn the camera on and show you my process. Some of you um, have left messages for me and comments that they you would like to try it. And so maybe this was a, a good thing for me to do a little video just to show you my process. It's not, I'm sure, the only way of doing things, but it's how I do it. And um, maybe people who do applique think that I'm crazy, but uh, this has always worked for me. So I'll show you how I do my, my applique. Not my applique, but my pieces. So what I, before I show you this, I thought maybe I'd just give you a few hints. Because I had learned the hard way on some of this stuff. I didn't follow anybody's patterns or tutorials or anything like that. I just decided that this was how I was going to do it, and I did it. So my very first hint is if you're going to be doing this kind of work where you're going to be using some kind of medium to stick something down, don't use your best iron. I'll show you why. This used to be my best iron. And look at it. It's completely... Oh, I can get the light to shine on it properly. Whoa, sorry about that. I can't show you. Why not? Anyway, it's full of gunk. And that's from the sticky stuff that I use to do this with. And I can't get it off. I've tried everything on here to get this off and it won't come off. So that's my first um, bit of advice is don't use your best iron. And I just put water all over this. And um, the other little trick that I learned over the years is when I'm working with sticky stuff to put it in a black tray because when this stuff falls on your ironing board surface if it's if it's light colored or if it falls even on this work surface you can't see it and you're going to stick your iron on it and it's going to make a big mess so find yourself some color colored tray where this will show up very easily for you as you can see, all my little snippets are very easy for me to spot. I'm not going to. I'm not going to accidentally put an iron on any of this. So that's my second hint, and you'll thank me for it if you do any of this kind of work. And and you, you'll thank me for this. So what I'm doing is I'm just a, putting um, the pieces for the vintage mugs on a scrap piece of fabric. I just picked this up at our second-hand shop here, not even a second, it's a recycle place here in town. Um, they always have old sheets and things for people to rip up for rags. I don't do that. I, I wash them really well and then I use them for this because this is not going to ever, this, this rag material is never going to be seen. It's only, the only purpose for it is to attach my pieces for my mug rug. And that's because I'm doing a piece that is in the shape of the mug rug. So this piece of material is underneath here. It's never going to be seen. So why would you waste really good material for it? Uh, material is too costly, in my opinion, to be wasted. So this is what I use. The scruffier, the better. Now, if you're making something like this, that you want your you want to see it like this isn't going to be a dimensional piece like this like this is so I wanted to have it put it down on a nice piece then you know um, then you would have to use a nicer piece of fabric for something like this but either way the process is still the same instead of on this one instead of having um, an old sheet I cut the fabric that I wanted it to be on. 
and I attached it in the exact same manner. So I'm going to turn the iron on now and I'm, oh no, I'm not. Yes, I am. I'm going to turn the iron on. While I'm telling, turning the iron on, I'm going to tell you about the different kinds of um, stuff I use to put these down. Put your iron on cotton. Most of these materials recommend that you do not use steam. However, I always use steam because I, I don't do what I'm told. So this is my, I'm going to bring this so that you can see it better. This is the fabric that I use to stick my, my pieces down. This is not heat and bond. I don't know what it's called actually, to be honest with you. I buy this at a fabric store and it's by the yard. It's on a bolt. I just tell them that I'm doing applique. I want something that's sticky on two sides and they bring the bolt and it comes in. This is the light. It's very, very light. You can see how, how it's just like, it's almost like a bounce sheet light. Um, it comes in different, it comes in light, medium, and heavy, I think it's, it is. And I buy it by the yard. And this is my favorite one. The reason I like this one so much is because when you've finished putting your pieces down, what you end up with is something that's very pliable. And especially when you're going to now go and top stitch this or quilt this, your, your needle isn't going through something that's really thick and sticky. It's very thin. It's just like going through, all really you're going through is two layers of fabric because this is really not even a fabric. It's, it's just, um, it's very gauzy. So this is the one that I like. The other reason I like this one is because there's no paper attached to it. So I can cut out little tiny pieces, put it down, put my iron on it, done. And I'll show you the difference. So this is my go-to. My, I don't know what the name of it is, fabric. The other one you can get is heat and bond. And you can buy Heat and Bond anywhere, Walmart, all these different stores have it. Heat and Bond, I, it also comes in different strengths. This is the light. I would never use anything but light. And that's because I have used in the past, I didn't know there was a difference really. And I used the thicker stuff and it was horrible. It turned this into a very hard piece of fabric, um, which was very difficult to sew. I went through a bunch of needles. So the heat and bond then is like that other stuff, except it's got paper on it. So what you have to do with this now is you have to put, cut out your heat and bond, attach it to one piece, to, to a piece of fabric, and then you have to peel the back of it off and attach it to the, the other piece. So it's, to me, it's twice the work. And I'm going to cut a little bit of this off and I'll show you the difference. And you be the judge. To me, um, i much rather, rather do something once than twice. But if this is all you can get, that's fine. So this is the heat and bond light. The sticky part of it is actually very light. Just like this one is. It's just I don't, I don't like to waste my time on doing double work. So um, I'm going to be putting this little, I'm just going to dump all that there. We're going to stick down this trailer here and we're, I'm going to put it on the bottom of this. There's enough room in here for two and I'll just cut them in half because I'm only just going to use this just to, to do my zigzagging on. So we'll start with this piece here. This is the largest piece. I have a little bit of stuff left, but I need a little bit more. So I'm going to just cut off a piece of this to use. And what I do is I look at the piece and I think, okay, I want to put a piece here and a piece here. And that will stick this down very well. So I just eyeball it.
and again put your pieces where you can see them so this piece is going to go there that's too long and you want to make sure that you always your sticky stuff never goes beyond your cut edge because your your iron will hit it and you'll be frustrated believe you me so I'm gonna put that one there for right now because I'm going to start with this one I'm going to put that on the back flip it over find where I want to attach it which is actually what I should do first to make sure I have enough room let's just lay this out for a quick minute That's actually getting pretty close to the end. I think I'm just going to use a different piece. Just bear with me one minute. I thought that it would be big enough, but it's not quite. So we'll just use a different piece. Okay, here we go. So our sticky parts on the back, we're just going to put that there. And we're going to apply heat and do not rub your iron back and forth just press it down and it's on there am i too far over how about we move over a little bit there i hope that's better so now i need another piece for this part here so I'll just lay that there and I see it's sticking out there or maybe you can't see that but I can so I'm going to move it in take my iron and you just hold your iron on for a couple of seconds and see it's on there I might want to put a little bit at the end just a tiny little piece You don't have to but for my way of thinking any help you can get for not having this fabric move while you're stitching it is worth it so I'm just gonna put a little tiny square there give it a little heat and it's done it's just on there so our next piece then is this piece here so you want to overlap a little I like to overlap it a little bit so that just in case something shifts you don't have a bit of a gap I mean you're going to be zig I zigzag over the gap anyway but I still like to just make sure that there's no oh, there's a little bit showing right here there so that's where that one's going to go. So for this one, I need a piece for there. And maybe another piece for there. Okay, so I'm going to move that one out of my way. I'm just going to peel this back a little put that piece down on there put that back and put the iron on it and just do it in stages I would I would never use a whole piece to me that's a waste you don't need it you just need it in spots um, I mean you can if you want to use a whole piece you go ahead but f I just find that it's really not necessary for this um, I can get it to stick down enough that I can sew it without worrying that it's going to move just like this and I'm going to put a little piece there and a little piece there okay. I tend to be a little on the frugal side when it comes to using things Okay, so I just dropped my scissors. Now we're going to do this piece. And again, we want to make sure we have it lined up there. 
and covering covering all our gaps. That'll do it. Like that. So I need a fairly big piece here and another piece here. So on this piece, I'm going to use the heat and bond. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to use about like that for the heat and bond. So first of all, I have to attach it to this piece. Okay, so it's not going to stick to the other one because it's got paper on it. So it's not stuck down. Now I have to rip this piece off. And you can see that sticky stuff on there. So then I have to realign this again where I want it for sure because once it's stuck down I can't move it. Okay, and then I'll apply my heat. So in my mind, the other one is far easier. I only have to use that once. I don't have to stick it twice. So to me, it's stuck down, but I had to do a double process to get it to stick down. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to my other stuff. I'm just going to put that little piece in there. don't want it touching any of my edges. And then I'm going to put another little piece right along here. And I'm just going to carefully fold that down. That's a little bit too far over. And that's going to be it for that one. So you can, you can, you know, try, try different ways of using and different products. Like I say, I've got my favorite and if I can't get my favorite, I go to the heat and bond, but I really do prefer the other one. So our next piece we're going to put on is the door and the door goes right there like that. So I need a little bit of a strip. What do I do with? I'm losing my stuff. Okay, I've got to cut it. Oh, here it is. So I need a, just a little strip. I don't need it to be the full width of the door. Just a little strip down the middle is fine for me. So I'm just going to cut a little strip. See, that's all I'm going to do. So I'll just peel that back. I'll put that down. And then I'll put the door in place where I want it. And put the heat on it. Good. So now we're going to do windows. This is the, the window that goes here. I just need a small little square. on the bottom. Position my window. And I'm going to pick this up in case it blows away on me and gets stuck somewhere. <laughs> and that's done. Now the other little window goes over here. So I need another little piece. I'm just going to place that on the back, put the window down, and apply heat. Next, the window on the door will be that. I just need a little tiny square in the middle.
So as you can see, this is a really simple process. It's There's no rocket science to this at all. The biggest challenge is making sure you keep your iron off that sticky stuff. As far as I'm concerned, that's the biggest challenge because I can't tell you how many irons I have ruined by not keeping focused on what I was doing. I will do the, the wheel. So that piece is too big. I have to make it a little thinner. And then it should be perfect. And it is. Let's put the wheel in place. And we have a few more pieces to go. We've got to put the tops on the windows and the doors. So that one, that one, and that one. For those three, we'll just need little skinny pieces, which I have. Can you hear that wind? You probably, I hope you can't. We're having um, what they call an Alberta clipper coming, um, which is basically a snowstorm. And before the Alberta clipper, we get wind, lots of it, strong, strong wind. And it started snowing here already. I'm hoping it's not going to be, it's actually tracking a little bit north of here, but I'm sure we're going to get some snow. March isn't over with us yet. March is actually our worst winter storm. Even though it's spring, we get the worst winter storms in March. More so than January and February. So I need one more little piece for this. This might do it. Uh, yeah, just. So this makes it very easy for me now to take this to the machine and stitch this all down. I will use a zigzag to do it because for these I want to see the stitches. Um, and I usually do a contrast color so that it just makes it more kind of crazy looking actually. Uh, what did I do here? It's going to take a little bit off there. And I just need a little piece for the back of that. Now on this one, you might have noticed that there is a little bit of black showing up here. I don't care about that because I've got one more piece that's going to cover that. See, that's going to cover that. The little hub cap. And I need another little piece. I got tiny little pieces in here that I don't want to lose. All right, that just goes up there like that. A little bit of a corner I don't need. And this is done. So there we have it. It's ready to go and be stitched down on the machine. So I hope this was helpful for anybody who wants to give this a try. Like I said, this is, I might be doing this all wrong, according to some people, but this is what I, this is my way of doing it and it works great for me. And it's fast and this won't ever come off. Once I stitch it down, it's permanent. So the next step for my um, 
camper will be to go and stitch around all of these seams, all of the edges of every piece here. We'll have a zigzag stitch. I'm thinking that this one will be zigzagged in black, just to kind of make these colors pop out some more. And then after I have it all zigzagged down, I will cut it out and I will leave about a half an inch all the way around and I'll find whatever piece I'm going to use from my back and I will attach the back to the front just how you would normally sew two pieces together. And then I slip in my, I have a template that I cut out my batting with. I slip it inside and then I quilt it. And all the way, the only way I quilt it is I just take the machine, machine and follow where I've zigzagged. And I always quilt with the same thread that I zigzag so it disappears. You can't see the quilting stitches. And um, sew up the edge and I'm done. So that's, that's the process I use for getting my piece ready for applique. So I just wanted to show you one other thing because, you know, um, yesterday I was talking about saving little pieces of material and, and I know that, I mean, I've been told by sewers and quilters that I should throw out all those tiny little pieces in those bags all over the floor and tables and everywhere else. But I actually love working with the small pieces. Um, like I said many times, I'm not a quilter. The very first real quilt I've ever made was just, I just did it a, a month or so ago. I did a wall hanging and it was a pieced quilt. It's the very first time I've ever done anything like that. This is the kind of quilting I've always done is small pieces. And I just wanted to show you what I mean. Here's a little piece that I've done. I'm just going to shut my iron off so I don't burn myself. This is a little piece I did a few years ago. Um, it's a little wall hanging and it's called Breasties. And it's, it was a free pattern on the internet designed by a woman whose sister had breast cancer. And, um, it struck me for many reasons, right in the heart. The first reason is I had breast cancer at the time I found this pattern. And also my girlfriend had breast cancer. Um, actually, she had breast cancer three times. And two times, sorry, you only have two breasts. And um, the other reason it, it struck me was because of the three women. So, um, my two best friends, I met them when I went to grade seven and we have remained best friends ever since I'm 65 now. And so I wanted to do this and I didn't want to do it once. I wanted to do it three times. So I made three of these. This one's mine. And if you will look at the size of some of these pieces, look at the shoes. Look at these tiny little shoes here. So, believe it or not, that's all the material that I had for that. <laughs> and if I hadn't have saved that crazy, stupid little uh, piece of material, I would have not had these shoes. But the other reason that I wanted to show you this was these tiny little pieces, if I hadn't have stuck them down with this kind of um, material that I'm using, heat and bond or whatever you call it, I would have never been able to stitch this down because these pieces were so small, you couldn't even hold them with your finger and use a machine. They had to be s adhered somehow. And so this is the benefit of using a, a medium like that is because you can put this down so that you can actually then go and stitch it and quilt it. So this is me here. I'm the gardener with the funny boots and the shorts. And this is my other friend who had breast cancer who has now passed away. This is my other friend. And when I'm touching this now, I don't know if you can see it, but see how, how tough it is? Well, you can't see how tough it is. That's a 
that's a feeling, but see how it, it's not soft. And that's because on this one, I used the uh, heavy heat and bond. And it's really, it's not soft at all. So um, anyway, I just wanted to show you this piece because of the small, tiny pieces of fabric and also the ability to stitch around all of this tiny, tiny pieces was only because I was able to use that fabric adhesive. I've known some people use um, glue sticks. I've tried that, but I find that it's really hard on the needle. Just like this, this heavy heat and bond is hard on the needle too. When you're going through, you know, when you're, when you're finally going to quilt this, you're going through several layers of fabric and your batting. And if you have a really thick um, fabric adhesive in there too, that's another heavy layer. So it's really hard on your needles and you, you're going to go through needles like crazy. Whereas this stuff, there is nothing to this. So when you're going through you know, several layers of fabric and your batting, and this is much easier than going through something that's much thicker. So that's something for you to consider. I just wanted to show you an example of some more applique work that I've done. And I've done a lot of different apple. I love to do pictures like this and things like this for applique. This is my kind of quilting. And I do admire everybody else's quilting because I now know how difficult that is too. Um, after doing that little wall hanging, I realized that, you know, all quilting is labor intensive. So this is my method and I hope if you want to try it that you can get yourself some of this this uh, fabric adhesive. I, I wish I knew what it was called. My mom used to call this stitch witchery but it's not called that now because I went into the shop and I asked for stitch witchery and they thought I was crazy. My mom was a seamstress in the 80s 70s and 80s and she used this on she did a lot of uh, bridal gowns and things and she used this on lace to stabilize lace and that's what it was called back then but it's not called that now so I hope you can find it because this is what you really want to use so I hope you enjoyed this and um, I hope you give it a try it's it's actually a nice way to use up little pieces of scrap and and they make great gifts. I can tell you, this was a real big gift for both my friends, even though it's not a big gift, but they treasured these so much. And these kind of gifts are from the heart, you know, so anybody would treasure them. So thank you for watching. I'll quit rambling on now. And I've got a couple more vintage campers to Put down and then I'm going to start working on my trucks. So if you want to see what I cut out, go back to yesterday's video. Um, all the different pa uh, patterns that I am working on are on there and uh, I've got a lot to do in this week. So bye for now. Take care everyone and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.